an equation is simply a statement of equality between um, two expressions. An equation is simply a statement of equality between two expressions. And here we're given uh, three examples of equations. The solution to an equation is simply the value of the variable that makes the equation a true statement. For example, here, um, we can ask the question, is x equal to 3 a solution? If it is, then we plug it in and it gives a true statement. So, when we plug it in here, you can see that it does give us a true statement. So therefore, x equal to 4 is the solution to x plus 1 equal to 4. In the next example here, they let x equal to 2. They want to check to see if that's a solution. So they replace the x with a, with a 2 here. And then you simplify it, the expression on that side. 2 minus 1 is 1. And that's a false statement. So x equal to 2 is not is not a solution. In, in, the, in solving an equation, we want to find out what value for the variable makes the equation a true statement. Um, you can solve some equations by using, simply by using the principles of equality here. These are our principles of equality, addition principle of equality, Subtraction principle of equality, um, multiplication principle of equality, and our division principle of equality. The addition principle of equality here says that if I have two quantities that are equal to each other and I increase both sides by the same amount, that's still going to be equal to each other. So if I, have, if I start out with 5, and I increase both sides by 2, they, they're still equal to each other. The subtraction principle of equality says that if I have two quantities that are equal to each other and I subtract the same amounts on both sides, they're still going to be equal to each other. So if I have 3 on both sides and I subtract both sides by 1, they're still equal to each other after the fact. It's like taking things off of scales is still balanced if it's balanced to begin with. The third principle of equality is called the multiplication principle of equality here, which says that if I have two quantities that are equal to each other and I multiply both sides by the same amount, this took them equal. So here I have two quantities that are equal to each other and I'll multiply both sides by the same amount. Now afterwards, they're still equal to each other. The last principle of equality is called the division principle of equality. Okay. Which says that if I um, have two quantities that are equal to each other, and I divide both sides by the same amount, they're still going to be equal to each other. So I have 12 equal to 12 here. And I divide both sides by the same thing. They're still equal to each other. We can use these principles of equality to solve an equation for the missing variable. We can isolate the variable by undoing the operation. So in this case here, I have x minus 7 is equal to 5. And if I want to find out, solve this equation for x, I want to break up the subtraction here. So the opposite of subtracting 7 is going to be adding 7 to both sides. This nullifies the negative 7 here, and I have x is equal to 12. You can check it by plugging back in. So I can let x equal to 12, 
and I replace it here. 12 minus 7 and 5 and it checks. And next I use the addition principle of equality to solve this equation. The next example here is I have x plus 2 is equal to 9. Now if I want to solve this equation I have to break up the addition. The opposite of addition is subtraction. So I can solve this equation by using the subtraction principle of equality. I'm going to subtract 2 from both sides. So x is equal to 7. You can check it by plugging back in here. You can let x equal to 7 and plug it in. And you see that it does give me a true statement. So it is a solution. The next one here, I have x divided by 8 is 4. X is being divided by 8. If I want to break this up, I have to do the opposite of dividing by 8. The opposite of dividing by 8 is going to be multiplying by 8. So here I multiply by 8. The 8 cancel there, and I have 8 times 4 here. So x is equal to 32. Now we can check it by plugging in. So I let x equal to 32. 32 divided by 8 is 4. And that's a true statement. So that one checks. Next one here we have 2 times x is equal to 18. x is being multiplied by 2. If I want to break up this multiplication, I have to do the opposite of multiplying by 2, and that's dividing both sides by 2. So x is equal to 9. Okay. So, you can check it by plugging back in. Replacing x with 9 is 18, so it's a true statement. It checks. It's a true statement. So far, we've seen how to solve an equation where there is just one operation. But we need to have some process to solve an equation that has more than one operation in it. We could have multiplication in it and a subtraction and so forth. What do we do in this case? Now, we have previously seen how to solve, how to uh, use the order of operations to simplify an expression. So we're condensing it down. as much as we can. But when we solve an equation, we're pulling it, an expression apart to find out what value will make it a true statement. So we're going in this order, pulling it apart. Okay. This, that's the general order here. In some cases, you may have, uh, the equation may have fractions with different denominators. Uh, multiply, multiply by the LCD to simplify it. In some cases, um, you may have parentheses in, the, in an equation. And the variable might be inside of parentheses. So you may have to use that distributive property to remove the parentheses. In other cases, you might have an equation that has variables on both sides of the equation. So you want to collect the variables to one side of it before you solve Okay. So when you when you pull the you want your goal here is to pull the expression apart by undoing the operation in this order. So here we have some examples. For this first example here, we have um, 2x minus 1.
So we see that we have multiplication going on and subtraction going on. So following the order of operations, you want to go, go in this order here, breaking it up. So you want to undo the subtraction first. We undo subtraction by addition. So we add one to both sides. So we see x is being multiplied by 2. So we go up a little bit further to unbreak up. We can break up that addition with that multiplication with division. So x is equal to 3. The next example we have here, we have x divided by 7 plus 4 is equal to 8. So we have addition and division here. So we want to break up the going up here, pulling it apart to get x by itself. We have to un break up the addition first. We break up addition with subtraction. So now x is being divided by, now our goal is to get x by itself, so we have to break up that division by multiplication. Okay, so x is equal to 28. In this case here, uh, we have a fraction with different denominators. In this case, we, have, we want to get rid of the fractions, unless you like fractions. I want to get rid of them. Um, so you're going to multiply both sides by whatever the LCD is. So that the least common denominator between 3 and 6 is going to be 6. So my LCD is 6. So I'll multiply everything through by 6. So 6 x over 3 plus 6 times 4 over 6 plus is equal to 1 times 6. So I'm multiplying everything through by 6. Okay, so this gives me 6x over 3 plus what's that, 24 over 6 equal to 6. 6 divided by 3 is 2x. 24 divided by 6 is 4. It's equal to 6. Now I have don't have any fractions to deal with. Now I can begin to pull this apart. So in this case here, uh, addition and multiplication, so I'll break up the addition first by doing subtraction. So I subtracted 4 from both sides. X is being multiplied by 2. The opposite of multiplying by 2 is... The opposite of multiplying by 2 is... Dividing by 2. In this case here, x is equal to 1. Let's look at another example here. In this example here, I have 3 
x minus 3 is equal to 3. So x, the variable, solving for x is inside the variable, inside the parentheses. So I have to multiply. Use the distributive property here to get rid of the parentheses. Okay. So when I do that here and here, we're going to have 3x and 3 times a negative 3 is equal to 3. So 3x minus 9 is equal to 3. Now I can solve it for x. So I have subtraction and multiplication. So I'm going to break up the subtraction first by adding 9 on both sides. x is being multiplied. We can break that up with division. Divide both sides by 3. So x is equal to 4 here. In this particular case here, um, let's look at this and write this one down. 3x plus 4. is equal to x plus 8. See so if variables on both sides. Okay, so collect the variable to one side of the equation, move the smallest x term. So in this case here, the smallest x term would be 1x. So I'll move 1x. It's addition there, so I'll move it by subtracting it. three x minus one x is two x now we can go ahead and solve it for x so here I'm adding four the opposite of adding four is going to be subtracting four so two x is equal to four x is being multiplied by two the opposite of multiplying by two is dividing by two this case here minus 3x minus 4 minus 8 minus x minus 8 move the smallest x term in this case here negative 3 is the smallest x term it's smaller than negative 1 Because if that's zero, negative one's there, and then negative three will be down here. So negative three is smaller than a negative one. So that's the one I'll move. And I move it by adding three x to both sides. Three x minus one x is going to be two x minus eight, and now these will go out, and I have minus four here. Okay, so now um, it may look a little bit odd, but I can always move stuff around. Two x minus eight is equal to negative four. If A is equal to B, then B is equal to A. So now I can go ahead and solve this for X. Subtracting 8, I'm going to add 8 to both sides. So 
So I have 2x is equal to 4. Break that up by dividing both sides by 2. And there's my answer, x is equal to 2.